CSM. You guys did it. Congratulations are in order. Uh, we've been in the book of Matthew for the past two years, and tonight we are finally at the end. We are covering the last words of Jesus as told by Matthew. Uh, it's been an awesome two years. Each and every week, you've gotten to hear Matthew and his story of Jesus, and you've had the opportunity to respond to it in different unique ways, and we are finally here. And so congratulations. A few ground rules before we begin. Uh, since we're on YouTube, I want to make sure that you guys are being active in the chat. So if you haven't already, just say hi. Let us know what campus you're from. We'd love to connect with you guys. Uh, and that'll ha help us have fun later on because we might be doing some giveaways later on. So make sure you're staying active, paying attention. We'd love to engage with you there. Uh, next, if you have a Bible, please make sure you have that out. We're going to be in Matthew chapter 28. Uh, verses 16 through 20. So if you got a hard copy, break that out. If you use uh, the Bible app, make sure you pull that out so that you can follow along. And then lastly, take notes. Uh, the hope is, is that every week we're coming away from these messages changed with a deeper understanding of who God is and a deeper understanding of our role in his plan. So again, grab an old fashioned piece of paper, pen, uh, notes app, whatever that is, and we'll get rolling, okay? But before we talk about Jesus' last words, I wanna begin with a question, okay? Everyone knows that last words are important, especially like in a movie or a book. Uh, that's because it is the last thing you're gonna take away from that movie theater as you're walking out with your friends. It's the very fat last thing that you're gonna remember. It's the first thing that you're usually gonna talk about. So to start, I wanna begin with like a little bit of a game. So uh, I want to quiz you on some famous last words, and I wanna see how many of you know these ones. We'll start off easy and we'll get a little bit more challenging as we go on. Okay, no IMDB though. I want to use just your brain, no Google. Okay, honor code here. Number one, I am Iron Man. You like that? That was for dramatic effect. That is from Iron Man in the movie Avengers Endgame. You should know this one just came out like last year. Okay, number two, so long partner. Come on, I know it came out a couple years ago. Track with me. That's Woody from Toy Story 3. I watched that right before going off to college, balled my eyes out in the theater, super fun time. Le uh, next one, he's not our hero. He's a silent guardian, a watchful protector. I know I'm going back even further. I know most of you have seen this, come on. Yeah, it's from Batman, A Dark Knight. It's when Gordon is talking to his son about Batman and he talks about Batman as he's running off the screen. Okay, last one. And they lived happily ever after. Come on, you should know this one. It's basically every single Disney movie ever made. Come on, you should know that one. All right, how'd you do? Four out of four, three out of four, zero out of four. Come on, let me know. Okay, this leads us to our passage today. Okay, we're gonna be talking about the final words of Jesus. So hopefully you have the book of Matthew open. And again, just to catch you up on where we've been, this is the last message in our resurrection series. And the big idea throughout this series is that the resurrection is a call to action. And if you have notes, write that down. The resurrection is a call to action. Jesus throughout this story has been uh, spending the past three years teaching, healing people, spending time with his best friends, which we call the disciples. Uh, and within the last month and a half, he has just been tortured. Uh, he's been arrested. He's been crucified on a cross. After he died, he's thrown in a tomb, buried. And then three days later, if you know the story of Easter, he rises from the dead. And for the past 40 days, he has been showing up to his disciples, uh, healing people, doing some more teaching, and so we are catching up at the very end of these 40 days. And it's right before Jesus is about to ascend into heaven. So if you have your Bible open, we're going to see what God has to say with us today. Um, and we'll read this together, starting in verse 16. It says this, Then the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When he saw them, they worshipped him. But some doubted. Then Jesus said to them and said, all authority in heaven on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. All right, so how does Jesus end his time on earth? Does he just say, and they lived happily ever after? No, he ends with a mission. He goes all in. He throws the chips all into the middle and says, no, we're going to go and continue the momentum that we've started. This isn't just something that we're going to rest back on. We're going to go and advance the kingdom of God. Now, there's three things Jesus says in this commission that I want to talk about, and we're going to break it down together. And so if you have your notebook, feel free to be writing these down as we follow along. 
But number one, Jesus assures them of his power. Again, read what he says. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Now, why would Jesus say this? Now, remember what's happened to these disciples. It's been a crazy month and a half. And maybe you can relate. They're confused. They've got whiplash. They're so thrown off by what's happened. It says that some doubted they were even looking at Jesus. They didn't even know exactly who this might be. And maybe you can relate, but I feel like even the past month and a half has been crazy for me as well. I'm confused. I'm scared. I'm kind of left with my head scratching. What is going on? And so in the midst of this, Jesus meets them there. And he says, all authority on heaven and on earth has been given to me. Jesus is all powerful. He's in control. Nothing surprises him. He's not confused. He's not scared. He's not worried. He's in control. And CSM, I understand that this has been a crazy time for us. I know that some of you guys have had family members lose their jobs or income. I know some of your family members have dealt with illnesses. I know some of you guys have been scared. I know some of you have been dealing with mental illness. All those things. Jesus is in control. And maybe that's what you need to hear today. CSM, the words of Jesus are still true today as they were 2,000 years ago to his disciples. Jesus sees you. He's in control. Number two, Jesus gives them the mission. And this is where I want to spend a lot of our time. Jesus gives them a mission. He says, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. This is the mission, and it is a big one. Jesus is commanding his disciples to go to all nations to share Jesus, to go teach them to obey, to make disciples, to baptize people. Now, I know a lot of you guys are finishing up school. Some of you guys might be taking finals right now. Uh, You guys are probably worn out. Uh, We're going to do a little bit of geography, so I want you to hang with me, okay? I promise we'll make it fun. Uh, I promise, okay? But I want you to hang with me. Can anyone tell me down in the chat how many different countries are in the world today? Okay, how many different countries are in the world? I know some of you probably had to study this for a junior higher elementary exam. Let me know down below. Okay, I'm going to give you a couple seconds. Come on, put them down in the chat. I know you're there. Okay, there are 195 different countries in the world. That is a lot of countries, okay? But that is not what Jesus is talking about. That is not what Jesus is talking about. Jesus uses a phrase called pas ethnos, pas ethnos, okay? This means all people groups, okay? It's Greek. And what is Jesus is saying, go to all the different people groups, all the different families, all the different clans, all the different groups that consider themselves tribes, all the people who belong to one another. Go to these people. So you see, nations can have hundreds of people groups. So even though we have some 195 different countries, America alone has 489 unique people groups. Okay, so for our first giveaway, okay, I need some ground rules for this. Okay, I've got a $10 Dutch gift card for you guys. I know that you guys are struggling. You could use some caffeine and sugar. I'm going to hook you up, okay? Here's what I need from you. I'm going to ask you to guess a number for this question, okay? No spamming. You only get one guess. Moderators will be watching. Uh, If you spam it, you're disqualified, okay? Sorry. I need you to guess how many unique people groups are in the world today. 15 seconds down below. Give me your best guess. Ready, go. Remember, you got Dutch bros on the line here, okay? And I will send it to you this week. Uh, Moderators will get your contact info and all that stuff, okay? All right, you guys ready? Start wrapping up. Okay, according to the most recent statistics, that's really hard to say, recent statistics I could find, there are 17,424 unique people groups. 17,424. So congrats whoever got the closest. I will send you Dutch your way. Don't worry if you didn't get it. I've got another one coming later on. Okay, 17,424 people groups. Jesus is telling his disciples to go to all those people and to proclaim the good news of Jesus to everybody they they could find. And that's exactly what the disciples do. If you read the book of Acts, it tells about all the different disciples' journey to every corner of the world that they could find, okay? And they did a great job at this. But we're gonna come back to what the status of the mission is today because I wanna know, and maybe along with some of you guys, is how are we doing on that today? But before we move on, I want you to think of this question. 
of the 17,424 people groups, how many people know about Jesus? Are there people groups that have never heard the good news of Jesus? We'll come back to that. Okay, number three, Jesus promises his presence. Jesus promises his presence. He ends his uh, last message to the disciples saying this, and surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. Jesus closes his time with his best friends by giving them a promise. He's about to ascend into heaven, so he's leaving them physically, which would freak out the disciples. It would certainly freak me out. But he promises it's going to be better because once I leave, I'm going to send my presence to you. We believers call this the Holy Spirit. You see, everyone who has chosen to follow Jesus now has direct access to God 24-7, 365 days a year. Jesus is about to be with his disciples all the time as they go out and try and accomplish this mission. But he's not just with his disciples, he's with you too. If you've made the decision to follow Jesus, Jesus is sitting with you right now in your home or in your car or in the middle of fries, wherever you are, he's with you. And he loves you. And CSM, this is so important to cling on to at some of the most important words of all of scripture. You see, because in this time of social and physical distancing, in the time of quarantines and this isolation and not getting to be with school or maybe around all the friends we want to be, it's really easy to feel alone and isolated. It's easy to feel like nobody's got our back. It's easy to feel like we are all doing this on our own. And God says, hold up. Not so fast. I'm with you. I see you. I hear you. And CSM, maybe you need to latch on to that tonight. Maybe you just need to cling to the truth that God is with you. He's not going anywhere. No matter if you make all the mistakes, if you leave church, if you decide to go to this or that college, if you move to a different state, a different country, a different friend group, Jesus is with you. And those are powerful truths for us. Okay, so what's the status of this great commission? What's the status of the mission that Jesus gave us? How are we doing? So here's our last giveaway for tonight, okay? Make sure you're active in the chat. Same rules, rules apply. Do not spam. Get one guess, okay? Here's the question. Of the 17,424 unique people groups, what percentage of these groups have never heard the good news of Jesus? Have never heard that Jesus died for them, that he loves them, that he wants to give them access to God? What percentage? Throw your guesses down in the chat. I'll wait. Couple more seconds. Come on, throw them all in. One guess. All right. Moderators, just be paying attention to who is closest, okay? The correct answer is 42%. 42%. If multiple of you guessed it, whoever guessed it first, I'll send this to you later this week. Uh, seriously, thanks for playing along, okay? 42%, that's 3.2 billion people. And when numbers get that big, it's easy to lose track of how large that number is. And so I want to do a little bit of an experiment to show you how big this number is, okay? I'm going to use time. One second equals one second, okay? If we did how many seconds are in a minute, that would be 60, right? Everybody knows that. You should have known that since, you know, you could tell time, okay? 60 seconds in a minute. How many seconds in an hour? If you're good at math, unlike me, you'll know it's... 3,600 minutes or six seconds. Ha, my bad. Seconds. Okay. Any guesses on how long 1 million seconds is? If we were to wait in the chat together for 1 million seconds, how long would we wait? The correct answer would be 12 days. We'd be on the chat for 12 days if we waited a million seconds. Okay. We're going to get a little bit bigger. If we go to a billion seconds and we waited 1 billion seconds together on this chat, how long would we be together? 30 years. That's a long time. You're all graduated. Most of you have already completed college, started families. Maybe some of you are already doing an early retirement. Uh, that's a long time, 30 seconds. So with some easy math, 3.2 billion seconds is how long? Over 101 years. We're all dead at this point. Guys, I say all that to say this. There are 3.2 billion people waiting to hear the good news of Jesus. 3.2 billion people who don't know that Jesus loves them. 3.2 billion people who don't know that they have access to God. 3.2 billion who don't have the hope that we have. 3.2 billion people waiting for somebody just like you or me to get outside of our comfort zone and share with them the love of Jesus. 
Friends, this great commission doesn't just start, though, with going overseas. It starts in our own context. It starts with who we're surrounded with right now. We all have friends and family members and neighbors who don't know Jesus. CSM, are we willing to get outside of our comfort zone to share Jesus with the people that we have in our lives right now? I pray that we do. Are we willing to risk everything to make Jesus known? I pray that we are. You see, Jesus came and moved us from this purposelessness to a life of purpose. And he calls us into this adventure, this, this mission called the Great Commission. And we have the choice on whether we're going to accept that invitation or not. And guess what? He promises that he is in control of the universe. He promises that he's never going to leave you. And he promises that he'll go with you wherever you go. The resurrection is a call to action. I want to end our time together really quick. We just reading a couple words from Jesus. You can find them earlier in Matthew, Matthew 9, 35 through 38. He says this, Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Listen to this, CSM. Look at me right here. He says this, then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out his workers into his harvest field. CSM, the, the harvest is plenty. There's 3.2 billion people, at least, who are waiting to hear Jesus. Are you going to go out into the field and share Jesus with them? Man, and if you feel like God is tugging on your heart tonight, that he might be planting those seeds to maybe pursue some of those unreached people groups, man, I ask that you would lean into this message. There's so many resources. Maybe you need to sign up for a global trip. Maybe you need to come with us to New York or Los Angeles or to Egypt once all this clears up. Maybe you need to talk to your life group pastor or your student pastor about what it looks like to pursue missions. But CSM, tonight, I'm going to ask all of us pray this simple prayer. It's a scary prayer, but I'm going to ask you to say, I'm going to ask you to hold open your hands and say this together. Here I am, Lord. Send me. He's not necessarily going to send you overseas, so don't freak out. But here I am, Lord. Send me wherever it may be, whether it's to my family, to my friends, to my neighbors, my school, my sports teams, or maybe across the sea to a nation that's never heard about Jesus before. Here I am, Lord, send me. Would you pray with me? God, I am so thankful for all these students. God, I'm thankful for this mission that you have given us. God, I'm thankful that you didn't choose just to do it all alone, but that you invited us into this mission with you. And God, wherever these students are tonight, God, I pray that we'd say these words together. Here I am, Lord, send me. And that we would listen to what your voice is saying. That we would listen to where you're leading us. God, and that we would go in boldness, that we'd go in power that you've given us and that we would go reach people for Jesus. That we would make joyful, passionate disciples who love God and love other people well. And God, I pray that for the people that you're calling to step out and go reach unreached people groups, God, I pray that you would give them an extra dose of your courage, an extra dose of your power, God, and that you would help them lean into what this path may look like for them. We just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.